Welcome to another edition of Got Gameplay. I'm Brian Calhoun. As always, Christine Chubb is here. I sure am. Moment Christian will not be joining us for this week's show, but I have something else for you. In the meantime, normally we would just talk over the entire episode of Got Gameplay because we are trying to discuss and inform you on the gameplay. But this time, considering this is actually based on another completely different piece of work, and by piece of work I mean a comic book. Mm -hmm. I feel like you guys should just sit here for a second and watch the intro. So, take it away, intro. They say nobody walks in the City of Angels, but she had legs that went all the way down to the sidewalk and up the stairs to my office. She rolled inside like the morning fog, moist and mysterious, and a little bit chilly the one look in her eyes, then I knew things would be heating up fast. I said, what do I call you? And she answered, Cherry Pops? Something told me it wasn't her real name. Then she started blubbering about some cool cat named Vincent who'd split the scene, leaving Cherry with a broken heart and the kind of deep aching void only a good private can fill. And the closer I got to my client, Cherry, the deeper the mystery got. See, Cherry danced at a mobbed-up Sunset Strip joint called the Smoking Barrel. And her boss, Tony, was the one and only son of Don Luciano. Capo de Tutti... Tutti de Capi de... Tutti Fruity Capo de... What, he, he was the West Coast Cosa Nostra boss. And she was freaking bad. Oh, I'm sorry. Where was I? Oh, right. Anyway, turned out Cherry's massive pendulous skills at come to the attention of Kim Bong and Jim Bong Sick, proprietors of an even shadier L.A. Flesh Palace known as the Twin Dragon. So when the smoke and barrel's top stripper disappeared one night, Tony Luciano knew just where to look. Don Luciano prized an eye for business above his son Tony's view of the world through the sights of his gun. He'd given him the nightclub to run to get him back on the high road. But Kim Bong Sick had kidnapped my client Cherry Pops, the only human Tony Luciano had ever warmed up to. And Tony couldn't even spell negotiation. So that was the intro to like this edition of Got walls. Gameplay. Really, it's, it's hard to really put into words. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was funny. I mean, it's, it's obviously dirty and clever, but uh, and it, it definitely sets the tone for what I imagine the comic book is like. Uh, yes, this is all based on a comic book for sure, and I could say more than that, but I don't know. How, how do you distill entire comic books run into like five minutes and not come off somehow wrong? No, so, you really can't, yeah. So it's based on a comic book, which clearly is a little pulpy, a little... Full satire, if you will. Yeah, slightly. I like that her name is Cherry Pops. That's so. The Twin Dragons' main attraction was their famous mermaid <laughs> show. Really the girl, Princess Neptuna. <laughs> so as you can see, though, the game itself anyway, is actually the this really cool. While they uh, a new girl, I guess like gun shooter. Yeah, kind of like just even the the movements of him walking in and the the look of the the layout has it. It almost kind of reminds me of like um, Bioshock. Whoa, whoa. That kind of. Uh, first person swaggery movement that the <laughs> sorry right, when you're when talking you're and no the character is flailing her boobs it's hard to really pay attention. This game is it's something else. But in terms of mechanics, like this is a game you expect me to like pull up. Remember with the NES and Duck Hunt, you had mm -hmm. the orange little light gun? Yep. So I didn't play with anything like that. I used my controller. Okay. And I point my controller and hold it like a gun. Like, clearly I'm only holding, like, one of the handles. Yeah. But it actually did work out pretty well. And I'm sure if you have, say, one of the cameras, because there are a couple of PlayStation cameras, and one of them really tries to be kind of... Well, not the Kinect, not the Microsoft Kinect, but just try and fill sort of a similar thing. A couple of, um, a couple of cameras inside of it, a couple of you know, speakers, and also a microphone to record your voice. So it's... It's like a connect light. Yeah. But. Well, you remember when they used to have that um, when they brought out that cam or the uh, the gun add-on to the move control for a while there, and that kind of gun environment. So. Yeah, actually, I'm, I remember playing Call of Duty Three, or sorry, not Call of Duty Three, Killzone, Killzone Three. Yeah. That's it, Killzone Three. They had a 
review event at a paintball thing and I played and do that. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. That'd be cool, like, have, like, a little, little attachment. But, despite not having... Ooh, that's a destructible one there. Yeah, it, so, something that is destructible. It now, it's nice not all destructible. Mm -hmm. It's definitely... Here's this one thing that people will be able to, say, shoot, and it'll fall apart. And the thing right beside it, the identical thing right beside it, no, not so much. That's, that might as well be made of titanium, for all you know. Now, is the yellow your aiming mechanism? Like, is, are you hitting a specific button to have it automatically aim and focus for you, or is it, do you have that option? Well, there is a button to... Nice. I mean, Okay, there's a bunch of mechanics. First off, that one that I just saw right now, I don't know why it's in the game. I'm sure it's a joke from the comic book as I try and shoot the the glass ball the ladies. I was going to ask, are you going to try and save that lady, or is she just going to swim around? I, she just goes, like, once again, there's some stuff in here that will fall apart. There's stuff in here that will just be undestructible. Yeah. The ball, the glass lady in the fishbowl, not going anyplace. She's stuck in there until someone else lets her my gun. Even though it's taking down all these people. She's just living in a fishbowl. We'll not take her down. So, game she mechanics. Um, yeah. <laughs> you done? Yeah. Okay. Uh, game mechanics. As I mentioned before, for some reason, swiping your hair out of the way is a game mechanic that what? comes up constantly. You'll see it again. It already happened. But you'll see again. In fact, uh, throughout this game, you do have to use the move controller to. Yeah, pick up oh. health packs. Okay. Open doors. Like um, so it's one... not just shooting. You're, not, you're actually doing other things. You do a few other things. I mean, it pretty head. much, if I were to describe this game as anything, uh, light gun rail shooting. Okay. That's what the mechanics are. But there are a few oh, other things because of the game pack, as I die oh. for the first time. This game's really hard. Especially, I found that I was, like, losing sort of bullets, where right? I was supposed to be aiming a lot. Luckily, towards the end of this level, I found out, I love you know, my hair, here's the hair thing. Was, oh, okay. Uh, towards the end of the level, um, and you always knew about it, but I really started to use the, let's line up this reticle towards the center button. It can, it's one button that control, so I was pressing an option to line myself up towards the center. Uh, but until I got into that rhythm, the shooting really wasn't that great because I kept sort of losing where I was supposed to be shooting from. Um, you already saw swiping the hair. Now you swipe to open doors, swipe to pick up health packs, but there's also this part later in the got gameplay where you'll be just swiping to do like post combat maneuvers. And finally, the, the last thing I'm going to mention is the first thing you asked me about, those yellow circles. They come up on the guy who's going to shoot you next. So the guy who has the yellow circle He's the one who's going to be the, the next person to join the And once that circle, once the inner circle, which is expanding into the outer circle, once that happens, uh, he shoots you when you lose health. You have slow mode. Yes, you also have slow mode. Which is, you know, this game isn't super hard, but I will admit that was a lot easier with slow mode than it would have been without. Especially considering the number of people that they throw at you, and as quickly as they throw you, those people at you. The fact that you have to spend like a good two seconds reloading. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's some. Here. I'm not a game developer, so I do not know exactly why the choice was made. Jerry, but man, there are just sometimes I can get to where you are. in this specific game. See, sw uh, swiping pickup health. Okay, there we go. Now I'm where I was just wondering, why are you many throwing this many thing? people at me? And so take me this time, like two minutes or so to unload. It just made no sense. Yeah, there's a long reload time. I can see it there. So there's not a lot of places for you to hide. It seems in this level as well. It just seems pretty out in the open. And you will hide every once in a while, but that's not the gameplay. I mean, yeah. the idea is that here you are. Lot. Here's a cool little game mechanic too, where you can sort of, if you're really quick, you can throw the objects back at the people. Yeah, it just hits them in the head. <laughs> and then I shoot him service? Um, and then I go into this thing where I can hide. And I do not know why he chose, why the character chose to hide. But the character was described at the very beginning by the narrator as a gentleman who shoots first. Uh, yes. Yeah, he seems like, yeah, walk-in, guns blazing kind of thing. So, 
it's not in his character to really hide. So that's why it makes sense for him not to hide right. in terms of uh, you know, story. But in terms of gameplay sometimes. And here's another thing that happens quite often. You play what they call shoot a mole. You know, obviously some sort of take on rock a mole. Where you basically just stand there and the characters will all line up behind some cover and all you can do is sort of, you know, headshot. And that's part of the basically what that part of the game is so they are mixing up the shooting a little bit in order to you know somehow somehow make it easier for you somehow well let's not say make it easier for you to give you some variety so i'll give them that i mean they're really good i never felt bored during this level i never thought you know i want this to be done well hello but i don't know a full game i'm not totally sure if i'm down for a full game of this how long is it Man, I didn't, like, I'm not totally sure we're ever going to get through this one for that game because there's so many, so many things that kept me from actually finishing this game. Are there side missions in it? No, it really is kind of just like a, like a shoot. I mean, maybe I'll try and get done for next week's game. I don't know. I'll see what... No worries, no pressure. <laughs> you're, you're, like, you're forcing me on. I was like... I'm sorry, finish. I didn't know. I was idle like curious. Brian, finish this game. <laughs> Do it now. Do it right now. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't finished this game, but this isn't a review. This is just a got gameplay where I'm showing you a game where you might want to check out, and I was surprised. I wasn't expecting, like, if I walk in here, in fact, I did walk in here. You did not know this was a, like, a light gun shooter, basically. I mean, that's kind of a surprising thing. So, uh, in the meantime, though, I have to get the shotgun, but it doesn't seem to be helping me because I, once again, I lost, you know exactly where I was supposed to be, and then while I was, you know, in the dead screen, mm -hmm. the respawn screen, uh, it, it came back, but um, I think that's pretty much it for this edition of Got Gameplay. It looks good. It looks like a fun game. I think I would pick that up as uh, something just to mess around with for a bit. And maybe I will actually finally find the time to get it done, and we'll talk about it on an upcoming game, or up to upcoming episode of Got Game, but man, I turned down the volume while the gameplay was on, it is a mature game. Yeah. It is not a it is it is not a politically correct. Her name is Cherry Pops. I think that kinda tells you. <laughs> it's gonna get a little iffy. 